A nuclear war in 2024 has wiped out most of humanity. The surviving humans are forced to fight an artificial intelligence for resources. The story begins in the near future. We see a girl named Emily Zabriskie on her way to work driving past a billboard advertising Autofac. At this time, the car radio announces that the Chinese army has been put on alert for the conflict between the US and Russia. Suddenly, the radio signal is lost. Emily tries to switch to another wave, but suddenly notices a rocket in the sky. The frightened girl pulls over to the side of the road and gets out of the car. Emily watches as the rocket flies straight toward the metropolis in the distance. Emily wakes up, and it turns out that it was just a dream, or maybe a memory. The girl wakes up in a half-abandoned building, and a man named Conrad shows up at the door and reminds her that it's time for them to hit the road. Emily and her crew are driving an old truck through a ruined city that was once destroyed by nuclear war. All that remains on Earth now are factories run by artificial intelligence, AI, that continue to produce goods for non-existent consumers. One such factory is Autofac. Unnecessary products have been polluting the already devastated cities for years. Emily, Conrad, and Perrin arrive at one of Autofac's landfills of useless goods. The team tracks down the drone that delivers the latest package in order to bring it down. The first attempt proves unsuccessful. The drone turns around, and the friends realize that the camera has spotted them. The drone drops its payload and gains altitude, but the team can't let that happen, because if it does, it will crash as it falls. Emily is quick to take another shot and hits the target precisely. The drone rapidly descends and falls into a huge mountain of autofact boxes. Emily opens the drone's gearbox and happily discovers that the control module and transmitter are still intact. Conrad asks her to get everything she needs out of the drone as quickly as possible before the factory starts looking for it. The girl cuts all the wires and finally removes the control module. Emily returns home with Conrad and Perry. With the help of the retrieved module, the girl manages to connect to the company's server. Suddenly Emily notices a magazine in Perrin's hands. The girl immediately snatches the magazine from his hands and puts it away. Emily informs him that she only has one copy. The surprised Perrin does not understand what is so important about the magazine. Emily suddenly sinks into memories of one of her outings when she found many different books for her friend's library and discovered this magazine. Let's go Zabriskie! Emily puts the magazine in the box and returns to her computer. The girl accesses Autofax customer service. Emily, Conrad, and Perrin want to get the attention of the advanced AI at all costs. And in order to get a response from the system, the friends need to come up with an unpredictable complaint. Perrin suggests writing that the product is pizzled. It's not even what? We want to give the factory something to figure out. The team is worried about possible retaliation from the factory for the down drone, but is determined to make contact with Autofax. Conrad and Emily agree to Perrin's suggestion and make the unusual complaint. After a couple of seconds, the system informs them that a representative will arrive within 24 hours to assess the problem. Emily, Conrad and Perrin are wary of such news, for there is no telling how this meeting might end. The team gathers the few surviving inhabitants of the settlement in the chapel to announce their imminent contact with the Autofact representative. Perrin informs the people that he, along with Emily and Conrad, will try to explain to the representative that the factory is no longer needed and that it needs to close. The residents don't understand who they want to talk to, because there are no real people at Autofact. In addition, it is very dangerous because the factory is capable of destroying out of self-defense. Many people oppose communicating with the unpredictable AI, fearing the consequences. However, Conrad decides to explain to those present that this is the last opportunity for a return to normal life. Twenty years after the war ended, the survivors waited for the factory to exhaust its resources and shut down on its own, but it didn't. Unless Autofact is stopped, it will continue to take materials and pollute the environment. Conrad is convinced that closing the factory is a matter of human survival. After the meeting, Emily calls out to Conrad and shares her worries that the factory may indeed be sending extremely dangerous drones to them. Just because there was fact reason doesn't mean we can reason with that. The girl warns Conrad to be ready to have a plan B, should anything happen. Conrad reminds her that in such a case there is no turning back, but Emily assures him that they will make it no matter what. Emily and Conrad's conversation is interrupted by a guy named Avi. He asks Emily to fix the heater, because she is the chief technician in their village. It turns out that Emily and Avi are dating, but Emily doesn't want to tell her friends about it. And, of course, the trouble with the heater is just an excuse to invite the girl to the old school bus where the guy lives. Avi wants to find out when they will stop hiding, but instead of answering, Emily invites the guy to join her in the shower, where they make love. In the evening, Avi is again bothered by the same question. Emily and Conrad were once together, and now Avi is afraid of losing Emily. The guy worries that he, a simple librarian, is no match for a courageous rebel like Conrad. 
You're the last librarian in the whole world for all I know, and I'm an avid reader. Emily is confident that Abby's collected books will one day help restore peace. But first, the most important thing is to shut down the factory. And if it won't shut down on its own, Emily will shut it down. Emily promises to tell Conrad about them, and Abby confesses her love for the girl. Suddenly, Emily and Avi are distracted by a noise outside. Frightened, Emily runs up to the windshield of the bus and sees an autofact flying machine approaching them. All the residents gather in anticipation to meet the factory representative. The craft lands and a mysterious girl named Alice emerges, ready to hear all complaints about the company's services. Conrad and Perrin invite Alice into the chapel for a talk. First, Alice informs them that she is not a biological person, but a humanoid created to communicate with humans, so it is possible to talk to her in a natural way. The men are stunned to meet Alice and keep their eyes on her. Alice figures out that the word pizzled means nothing and that it was only used to start a dialogue. Conrad confirms the guess. She admits that the company is really hard to reach, but they are working on it and are willing to listen to any requests. Perrine gathers up the courage to tell Alice that all of Autofax's shipments over the past decade are piled up in the parking lot of the nearest sorting center. Alice is aware of this and argues that the factory must provide for the people. Look, we're doing fine. The Autofact provides us with nothing but obstacles. Conrad explains that pollution, smog, and heavy metal leaks are extremely detrimental to people's lives, cutting crops in half. However, Alice disagrees with the claims and argues that the factory's waste is small for its scale. Conrad and Perrin continue to try to convince Alice that people don't need the factory's products, but the humanoid stands firm. Autofact will not stop working under any circumstances. Meanwhile, Emily and Avi watch the meeting through the window. Realizing that there is no way to convince Alice, Emily sneaks behind and shuts her down. Alice is transported to Emily's cabin. While the humanoid is unconscious, Emily hurries to hook her up to her computer. Conrad approaches the worried people and explains that the dialogue with Alice has gone nowhere, so now they must try to reprogram her. But the locals are against the idea because of their fear of the factory. Conrad explains that Autofact knows that the war is over and that its activities are detrimental to humanity. However, the factory is not going to stop, which means it must be destroyed by humans. Emily discovers that Alice is much more complicated than she expected. The girl tries to awaken Alice, but things don't go according to plan because of the damage from the stun gun. Emily is forced to cut open Alice's head with a saw to repair the damage caused by the short circuit. At the same time, Conrad reveals the gist of Plan B to the people. They will blow up Autofact with nuclear warheads. Suddenly the scene of the terrible missile strike reappears before Emily's eyes. In addition, in her visions, the girl, standing in front of a mirror, cuts the skin on her head with a blade. After a while, Emily comes to her senses and continues her work. She manages to reset Alice, but it's not until she wakes up that she realizes whether the changes will work. Emily is still dealing with Alice's ultra-complex code. The girl concludes that she is no ordinary robot imitating human behavior. She's thinking. It's astounding, actually. Conrad worries that because of Alice's unpredictability, the situation might get out of hand, but Emily asserts that everything will be fine. Suddenly Alice regains consciousness. Emily wonders if she is functioning normally. However, Alice immediately realizes that her program interface is open, which means that people are trying to change her programming. Emily is puzzled by this immediate reaction, but does not try to hide her intentions from Alice. The girl chases Conrad and Perrin away to be alone with Alice. Emily does not understand why a simple service robot with such clever code would be created. Alice explains that consumers want to communicate specifically with people, not robots, so they decided to substitute real people. Emily disagrees with the factory's idea that everything in the world is replaceable. Maybe everything is replaceable. Emily soon realizes that she doesn't have time to reprogram a robot as complex as Alice. Emily gets an idea. She wants to clean out Alice's drive and install the drone's operating system. That way Alice becomes a delivery drone in human form. But the humanoid does not want to lose its programmed identity. Alice agrees to cooperate with Emily, who demands to take her and her friends to the factory. After a while, Emily comes out to Conrad and Perrin and confidently informs them that she has successfully reprogrammed Alice. The men are very surprised, for only recently Emily said that it would take much longer to do this. The girl does not go into detail and assures them that the robot will now cooperate. Early in the morning, the team packs up for the trip. Emily says goodbye to Avi. The guy is very reluctant to let the girl go on such a dangerous mission. But Emily aspires to a happier future for all of them without the autofact and is confident that no one but her will be able to shut down the factory. Emily promises Avi she will return and heads for the company's flying machine. However, Avi suddenly catches up with Emily and kisses her in public. Their relationship is finally no longer secret. While Alice pilots the ship, Emily brings Conrad and Perrin up to speed and introduces them to a detailed plan of the factory building. 
The factory's artificial intelligence is spread out over thousands of nodes on three underground levels. The team needs to blow up the three node grids and then Autofact will be finished. Emily hands Conrad and Perrine two passes with which everything locked should open. Emily herself has no such pass, but she assures her friends that she won't need one, since Alice will be with her. However, Conrad does not trust Alice and threatens to destroy her if anything happens to Emily. Meanwhile, the team arrives at their destination. Inside Autofac, conveyors continue to stamp out tons of unnecessary products at breakneck speed. The team takes the elevator down to the lower levels of the factory. Emily gives Conrad and Perrin a clock to synchronize their actions. They each need to get to their node grid, wait for the clock to beep, and turn on the timer on the warhead. Once triggered, they will have 15 minutes to get out. Perrin heads to the first node grid. The man turns on his flashlight and tensely looks around the huge room. Perrin heads toward his destination, but suddenly a black shadow appears behind him with a bright red flashlight instead of a face. It is obviously one of the Autofact robots, and its intentions are clearly unkind. The elevator stops on the next level. Before getting off, Conrad offers Emily a gun, but the girl refuses and assures him that she can defend herself. Perrin senses that someone is following him. Overwhelmed by fear, he hurries to reach his target as quickly as possible. Using his pass, Perrin enters one of the rooms, but danger already awaits him there. Emily and Alice go even lower. Left alone with Emily, Alice asks why she lied to her friends about being reprogrammed. Emily admits that they simply weren't ready to accept such an intelligent and human robot. Emily is extremely surprised that the machine is capable of understanding humans so well as to create something like Alice. However, Alice disappoints the girl. Autofact does not need to understand humans, it can create anything for which there are blueprints. Alice claims that she was created with the help of Alice Fry's archive neurodata, the head of Autofact's PR department. The humanoid talks, moves, and thinks just like the real Alice Fry. Meanwhile, Conrad successfully reaches his node grid and installs the warhead. Suddenly, however, he realizes that there is someone else nearby. Emily and Alice emerge from the elevator on the lowest level. Suddenly Emily notices that there isn't a node grid, but something else. The girl sees many incubators with humanoids, breaks one of them and discovers her own clone. Emily is horrified to realize that the factory is trying to replace humans. It's not trying to replace people. It already has. Conrad turns out to be just as much a humanoid as Alice. Shocked, Emily freezes when she sees her friend decapitated, at which point Alice disables her with a stun gun. Emily wakes up with the software interface open in front of a huge screen broadcasting her memories. It turns out that Emily, too, is not human, but merely a high-tech humanoid. Emily is frightened and cannot understand what is happening. Alice explains that the factory needs to download all of her archives to figure out what the problem is. Alice informs her that everyone Emily knows is also a humanoid. I feel human. It turns out that humanity died out shortly after the war, and Autofac had no consumers left. However, the factory soon realized that it could replace them, and began to produce new consumers, just like everything else. Emily mentions that they don't consume anything, to which Alice replies that they are only a statistically inevitable outlier. Autofac has populated hundreds of pilot towns with the same humanoids, and they all consume as intended. And Emily and her friends are a factory error that needs to be corrected. Right now, their settlement is being prepared for a sweep to soon be populated by new humanoids. Analyzing Emily's data archive, Alice discovers that Emily is different from the other humanoids not because of a system error, but because of a malicious program. Emily reveals the truth and admits that she downloaded the virus into her program herself. For years now, Emily has known who she is, but she has had to play along with her friends who thought they were real. Emily tells Alice about her recurring dream, which made her realize that something was wrong with her. However, it is not a dream at all, and now Emily asks Alice in whose image she was created. Alice hesitates to answer for a long time, but Emily already knows everything. Emily Zabrisky was the founder of Autofac, and now that the world doesn't need a sentient factory, Emily must shut it down. Suddenly, lights go out everywhere and Autofac finally ceases operations. Emily returns to her home settlement and is reunited with Avi. She seems happy as a human being. What do you think the future holds for Emily and Avi? And could humanoids replace real people? Share your thoughts in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.